the world of casual gaming, the most popular one of its kind is most likely Plants vs. Zombies. Released in 2009 by PopCap, was worked on by mainly four people for most of the development. George Fan, who created the idea, was the one who worked on the entire game by himself for the first year until Tom Semple did the programming, Rich Warner did the art for the game, and Laura Shigahara for the music. This game was a giant success, spawning many sequels, other games, merchandise, and very shitty YouTube thumbnails. Like, what? What is this? This is never in the game. What the? Please find something better to do with your life. I've loved this series for a while, and although it has had its ups and downs, I've always liked it. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the entirety of the series. Yes, each and every Plants vs. Zombies game, along with some history of each game. So get your sunflower, get your walnut, because I'm going to be reviewing every Plants vs. Zombies game, starting with the one that started it all. Now obviously before I get right into Plants vs. Zombies, I feel like I should give a little bit of backstory about PopCap as a whole. In 2003, PopCap started by making one of its first games called Zuma, followed by a couple of others such as Bejeweled, Peggle, and also Plants vs. Zombies. These were all casual games, and soon, PopCap clearly asserted its dominance in the casual gaming market. But after that, PopCap wanted a new IP, so they hired George Fan, who had previously worked on a game called Insane Aquarium all the way back in 2002, which, if we're being honest, Insane Aquarium was probably the only and best thing to come out in 2002. You know, besides Spider-Man, but that's besides the point. And a few years later, Plants vs. Zombies was finally created with a pretty small main development team. It was able to mix the casual gaming and add some complex and strategical elements to it. And the irony between brain thirsty zombies and super cute plants made a really neat cute meets macabre feel for the game. And clearly this was a giant success because the series spawned lots of merchandise like plushies and toys and comic books. The story in this game is incredibly simple. All it is is you have to plant plants because zombies are trying to eat your brains. And guess what? You win. The end. I swear, man, this is one of the most simplest games I've ever seen. The only thing that beats this is Fortnite on the Nokia phone, okay? That game is objectively better than every other game, and if you disagree, then you are just objectively wrong. I'm not saying that games need a really good story to, for them to be good, because the main part of games are the actual gameplay, and Plants vs. Zombies is really solid. Like I said, like PopCap's other games, it has casual elements, but also is able to create more complex feelings for the player. It may seem easy at first, but as time goes on, you get a lot more options to choose from, so you really need to think about what you want to use and how you want to spare your son. And it makes this really nice, but also strategical game. I have to say, one of my favorite things about this game has to be the art for it. One thing that I love is how each plant in each zombie not only shows you how their personality is, but also what their abilities are. Like, look at this jalapeno. It looks like ninja. Don't you agree? <laughs> yes, you do agree. If you disagree, then you are wrong, and I will be sending you to my corporate office. The way this jalapeno looks automatically tells you what he is like. He's fucking insane and will explode. Just look at his eyes. The only person with more messed up eyes than that is King K. Rule, mother effa. Or this pogo zombie. You can tell he rides on a pogo stick because he has a pogo stick. Yeah. That's, um, it's pretty epic. Or how the fume shroom looks like he's about to literally whip somebody with a goddamn Gucci belt. I mean, chill down, bro. All of these plants just are so well designed, and I really love just the way they look. Not only that, but the zombies' designs themselves are able to be kind of creepy, but also slightly cute and fitting for the game. 
The way the game works is each time you complete a level, you have a new plan, and most often that plan is corresponding to the next level. Like for instance, after one of the pool levels, you get a spike weed, which can hurt zombies but also can damage tires. And guess what? In the very next level, you have this guy riding on fucking, I don't know, what is it called? What What is this called? Oh yeah, that, that's what it's called. An ice resurfacing machine. Yeah, and when you place a spike weed down, BOOM! It completely explodes him. You fucking idiot. Or how in one of the levels you get a cactus, and in the very next level, the cactus goes up, and it shoots the balloon zombie, and the balloon uh, goes down, and he, and he drowns, because he's okay, he dies. I love this game so much. PG. This game does a really good job at introducing you to the new characters and the new mechanics that you're going to have to be working with, like how each level has its own very unique mechanic. The grass levels are your typical grass levels, but the nighttime levels not only have graves, but they also require you to plant sun shrooms and sunflowers as your only way of getting sun. And the pool levels have you planting lily pads with scuba divers and stuff. And then in the night pool levels, there's fog. And then in the roof levels, it messes with the depth perception. And now we have to plant pots because of the roof surface and having no garden. And we have to use catapults or else our pea shooters won't work. And I've said all of this without even mentioning the music of the game. It's fantastic. Somehow, the musician for this game created themes that were easy and nice to listen to, despite the fact that you're gonna be listening to them over and over and over again. And it's not an easy thing to do to create music that's able to be listened to over and over and over again without being repetitive. The music has a slight, scary, apocalyptic theme to it, while also being childish enough for a kid to enjoy, or at least a younger audience. It's just really nice to listen to, and the ending theme is honestly great. I like all the music in the game, even the Zen Garden music is pretty good. The final thing I want to talk about is the mini games in the Zen Garden. Basically all of the extra stuff in this game. Now the Zen Garden is pretty boring. It's mainly just stuff for the casual gamers who just want to keep on playing this game endlessly and get the Tree of Wisdom or whatever. But also, there's mini games like Face Breaker and Portal and Bejeweled style gameplay. They're honestly really cool and clever and I like them. I think they're nice additions, although sometimes these achievements, I mean, a little, a little stupid, don't you think? But overall, Plants vs. Zombies was an incredible start to this series and was a really good game. It's very unfortunate what, ha what had to happen to PopCap right after this game was released, but we'll get to that when we discuss our next game. <laughs> Now, I want you all to guess what happened after all of this. Yeah, you probably already know because you're watching this video, but in case you didn't know, while PopCap was in its prime, EA bought it for almost $1 billion. That's insane! And they now had access to not only their Suma and Bejeweled series, but also their massive hit Plants vs. Zombies. And they did not improve it, okay, I'm telling you, man. Released in 2013, Plants vs. Zombies 2 was only for mobile, which kind of already turned off a lot of people as the original game was meant for a PC and then was released for mobile a little few years after. For starters, while Plants vs. Zombies 2 was developed, George Fan and a, a lot of other employees at PopCap at the time were fired by EA. What's incredibly annoying is the fact that he was pretty much fired just because he didn't want to make the game freemium, which means that it's a free game, but it includes a lot of pay services like the plants and the upgrades and stuff like that. Speaking of which, that was a huge problem with Plants vs. Zombies 2, but I'll get to that in just due time. So Plants vs. Zombies 2 was released, and at first, it was actually a pretty good game. It had three worlds, and also had about 20 levels in each world. So, totaling that up, you have about 60 levels. That doesn't mean everything was perfect, though. There's now a star system, and if you do certain tasks, you get multiple stars, which will increase your thing, and you can go to exclusive areas. There's also extra levels, too, that you can go to if you're finished the worlds. 
The whole time travel aspect really isn't that used so far in the game. The pirate level do have cannons and the West Wild West levels have mines, but that's really all. There's not much variety in the levels other than the art. I like the new plants, I think they're pretty cool. And then we get to the biggest problem with the game. The microtransactions. <laughs> they're here. <laughs> Now, believe it or not, back then, these microtransactions weren't as annoying as they were now because there was only five of them. There was only five plans, each costing five dollars, which is absolutely retarded. Why are they five dollars? They are plants. You are a squash. Please stop using my mom's credit card. <laughs> but still, it wasn't that annoying. But it started to get really bad around the time of 2016. This is when plants started to be released by the week, and it was starting to get really annoying having to deal with all of these new plants for $5 each. And the updates aren't that good either because they massively increased the difficulty of the game. I said that Plants vs. Zombies had some difficulty in the game, but never so much where you would grind your teeth and make sparks. With this game, it's just way too hard and it really just takes out the whole casual game vibe that the original one had. And it goes from super hard to super easy really randomly. You'd think that the more updates and the more worlds, the harder they'd get. But it's not like that. You go from a pretty hard hard world to the super insane hard beach world and then back to a world that's like not as hard as that there's no consistency and the levels themselves and the plants themselves just started to get more and more desaturated and bland Recently, they added a new arena mode, and all that does is just add more microtransactions with the whole mint thing that you have to do, and also just adds even more of a competitive element to the game, which can be good, but the way they execute is just really poor. And so far, I haven't played Penny's Pursuit, and so far, it does look kind of good. It does look like they're trying to do something more unique, but so far, it just looks like more microtransactions because of the new fuel that Penny needs. I really do think they could have done something unique with the plants with the whole time travel element and they do do some pretty unique stuff like how there's dinosaurs that affect the way the zombies attack you or how there's some 8-bit guy pushing a goddamn arcade in the 80s level there are some unique ideas in this game but it's just executed really bad with all the microtransactions and varying difficulties in all of the worlds so many of the plants just feel the same the whole plant food mechanic is all right until you realize that you need to literally purchase things in order to get more plant food. A lot of the other modes that were in the previous game are now gone for some reason and are replaced with this, which is just desaturated and underdeveloped versions of the old mini games. Just but worse. And it's such a shame too, because this game could have been so cool. It would have been so cool to see maybe a mummy pea shooter or a goddamn vampire sunflower. It would have been cool to see all of these unique plants, but all they do is just change the art style of the zombies. But there is one thing that I will give this game credit for, and that is for the design. Now, I'm not talking about the actual gameplay, that is the exact same here, but the art is really good. They updated these design they updated the designs a lot, and the plants look much better than they did in the original. I really do like the new designs, and I like how each level has its very own unique style. And the music is even 10 times better. Now the same zombie feel from the original game is back, with the whole childish but still sometimes serious and banger music. But the thing is, now they have to add new elements and it just works so good. Like the Wild West theme is the perfect mix between the Wild West and the zombies and the whole childish nature that it has to have. I don't really know how they did it, but they somehow managed to make the music better than the original. But unfortunately, music and good visuals isn't enough to make a game great because this game is just pretty bad it's decent at some times but really bad at others and honestly i think it's just a real disappointment what ea did to this series let's move to the next game before i fucking blow my brains out In 2014, the series took an unexpected turn into the first-person shooter genre, which is really weird considering it kind of stands against everything that the original game went for, casual gaming, and now we're doing complex shooter games with very competitive elements. 
I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. In fact, I actually think that the Garden Warfare games are actually pretty good. But, you know, it's just really weird and also is kind of fitting in a way because it does actually really work. Garden Warfare it was surprisingly good. The main modes that you're going to be playing is the online modes and Garden Ops. And to be fair though, it is a little disappointing that we get barely any content in this game. I'm not going to have the excuse that it's the first in the series because it's technically the first in a spin-off series of an actual series. So yeah, that excuse doesn't work here. There's just not too too much actual useful content in this game. I guess we can go over Garden Ops first. Garden Ops is the typical mode that you're going to be playing for solo stuff. It's basically where you plant a garden against and protect it against hordes of zombies. That's it. That's the only solo mode that you can do. And even then, most of the time, you're probably just going to be playing that mode with your friends too, because that's kind of what it's meant for. And then of course, there's the online multiplayer mode. And that's kind of disappointing. The fact that there's barely any sol solo gameplay to be found here is really dumb. Because this game would work perfect as solo gameplay. At least they added it in Garden Warfare 2, but still, it's really weird not having it here at all. In addition to this, there's also some characters. We have four main ones. Sunflower, Plant... Pea Shooter, Cactus, and Chomper. Not the most exciting lineup of characters, but you know, it'll do. Plus they have tons of cool looking variants that are really cool looking and also change the character's abilities and stats as well as costumes as well. The plants are pretty cool in this game. I like how each one has its own varied attacks and each one can f suit your playstyle and they all are very unique. It's kind of disappointing that we only got four characters in such a shallow sort of first person shooter game, but you know, it's fine honestly. The four characters, like I said, are unique enough to satisfy. In terms of online modes, there's only two that I know of, Welcome Mat and Gardens and Graveyards. The welcome mat is basically just to try and ease you in by putting you into an online match where you can learn the basics and mechanics of the game, while Gardens and Graveyards is more of just a typical battle royale where you just kind of duke it out and try and kill as many zombies as you can while also having some sort of sub quest that you have to complete. Once again, it's kind of dumb that those are the only two modes, but hey, I don't really care that much. Surprisingly, there are still a couple of online servers, which is weird to me because not only is Garden Warfare too much better than this game in basically every way but also because this game is heavily focused on online and basically has no solo content and when games normally are focused so much on online they tend to die out quicker because people stop playing the game online and since there's no solo content there's no point in even playing the game but i guess people just really like this game so who am i to judge one thing that I really hate about this game though is the art style. It's not too bad and I get it, transforming these characters into 3D must have been kind of hard because it was the first time anybody had done that, but it just, I just don't like it. Especially the box art, the, just the way it's so detailed almost gives an uncanny valley feel. It's just really weird and almost unpleasant to look at. Even the plants, they're just, it's just too detailed, I don't like it. And like, it's not even detailed or like real realistic though it's cartoon characters that just doesn't doesn't feel right with me it just, just doesn't sit right with me in terms of how well the graphics hold up today they hold up pretty well some stuff does look pretty desaturated and bland but other than that everything looks kind of fine there is one thing though i just don't really like the format something about how just gray everything is and how everything just looks like it's from 2005 it's just kind of weird I'm highlighting the parts that I mean, it's like, I don't know, just like the way it shows you your th stuff and stats and stuff, it just feels like something from like 2005, it doesn't feel like something from 2014. It's hard to explain. Finally, we have the music, and to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed with the music, just like I am with a lot of elements of this game. To be fair, the music is good, but that's only because 80% of it is just remixes of the original music from the other two Plants vs. Zombies game, and a lot of the new music isn't all that special. 
I think the title opening is really good music, and I like how a lot of the new tracks have this more fast-paced speed to them. It really fits with the whole competitive and complex aspect with the shooters genre. But other than that, this game wasn't all too good for me. I didn't really enjoy it all that much, and some of the aspects of the game just don't make sense to me. Surprisingly, a lot of people still like this game, but I think we should move on to its, its far superior sequel. Like I said, Garden Warfare 2 is definitely the far superior version of Garden Warfare 1 because it basically improves every aspect of Garden Warfare 1. Garden Warfare 2 is not very different from Garden Warfare 1. The same game style is included, everything is basically the same, there's just a couple of new features like some new modes and also some new characters and abilities, but other than that, that's pretty much it. The biggest thing added to this game in my opinion would have to be the quest, something that I was really surprised that was left out of the first game but now since there are quests here it leaves a lot more solo gameplay for somebody who doesn't want to just play multiplayer or online some of the quests are just repeats but there are a couple of unique ones that i like too in terms of new characters there's three for the plants and three for the zombies the one on the plant side is citron rose and colonel corn and the one on the zombie side are super brains mecha imp and dreadbeard there's also some exclusive characters like Torchwood and the Super Go 3000. This game also has a bunch of new variants, which I think are even better than the first game. Like, some of them are just really crazy, but I have to say, my favorite is the Cheetahs one. Yeah, that one. That one's pretty cool. There are also some new modes. Some notable ones are Team Vanquish, which is just the typical kill the other team. Vanquish Confirm, which is basically the same as Team Vanquish, but this time you have to collect orbs to confirm your kill. Gnome Bomb, which is protecting a gnome, and it has a bomb. How hilarious. And of course, the most popular one, Turf Takeover, which is where you have to complete a certain objective and you're either on the attacker def team or the defender a team. It's much more varied in this game, and that's what I really like. There's much more content in this game than the last game. That's probably why this game is so much more active than the others. One thing I love about this game is that they finally fixed the art style. They somehow managed to get rid of the super hyper-realistic textures of the original game and fix it to make it more cartoony while also keeping a realistic touch. And the actual graphics and poly count is way better than the first game. Everything just seems more vibrant, and I'd say that everything in this game pretty much still holds up. Once again, a lot of the music is reused, but there are a couple of original tracks which I personally really enjoy. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, Garden Warfare 2 really isn't that much different from the original Garden Warfare, just with better graphics, gameplay, new modes, the works. Now let's go on to probably the weirdest game in the Plants vs. Zombies series, one that I personally find to be pretty awful. You know, some games you just want to take a step back and question, why the fuck was this made? And that's the situation with Plants vs. Zombies Hero. I know I said that the game was really awful, but it really isn't that bad. It's just really weird that this game came out when it did. Keep in mind, this game came out just a couple of months after Garden Warfare 2, and just the consistency of these game styles just boggles my mind. The first game was a tower defense casual game, then it had a sequel, and then they made a spin-off with a competitive first-person shooter aspect, and then they went back to casual, but this time it's also a really crappy card game? There's just no consistency, and plus, I don't think anybody was really clamoring for another Plants vs. Zombies mobile game, especially one that just had so little content. There was also the equivalent of loot crates in the form of packs that would get you new character cards. I know this was basically in Garden Warfare 1 and 2, but in this game, it's just like, why? Actually, all three of those games, the microtransactions are still there because EA needs to shove them down our assholes every single day. The actual plants themselves in this game are really cool and there's a lot of different variations of the zombies and plants that I think are pretty cool, but they were only used in this game so it's kind of a waste. 
like Bananasaurus Rex. That thing looks freaking awesome, man. And plus, the online mode was cool for a little bit until everyone stopped playing this game. This game was just really boring and really unnecessary, and it's a real shame that this is the one that kind of took a break afterwards when it was released. It really just left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. I commend them for trying to be different, and I do think that the alternate costumes for the plants and all of the variations of the zombies and stuff like that, I do think it's really cool, and I think the new improved art style is kind of cool. The music it was kind of where it lacks, because I like that it kind of has this game card feel to it it definitely fits this type of game style like a card game but a lot of the music is literally just modified from other music in the game and it's a lot of like just reused music and i don't really like it all that much as far as i can tell nobody really played this game and nobody really liked it it came out at a bad time and although the ideas were okay the overall outcome was just kind of poorly executed in my opinion so after this game the series of plants vs zombies took almost a three year hiatus which is a real shame there was no games in between unless you count this really shitty facebook game which we are not going to count please god no but yeah until may of last year when ea announced that they were going to make a new plants vs zombies game that being <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, in my opinion, is probably the best out of the entire series. You know how I said Garden Warfare 2 improves on almost every aspect of Garden Warfare 1? Yeah, well this game does the same except for Garden Warfare 2. It's like the ultimate Plants vs. Zombies game. The overall gameplay style and everything is pretty much the same with a couple of tweaks and things changed around a little bit. But overall, I really do like the changes to this game. For one, the daily quests or whatever that were in the previous game have been scrapped in favor of just normal quests that take up different levels and objectives. Objectives. To be fair, a lot of the quests have to do with you just fighting a bunch of enemies and then going on to one big boss. There's nothing that special about them, but I still appreciate them trying to do these epic quests instead of just these normal kind of boring ones. That doesn't mean everything's okay, but the changes that they did made, like the major ones, I think are pretty cool. Rex's Emporium, which used to be just kind of a little update that was in Garden Warfare 2, is now part of the new world map. Speaking of which, the new world map is really cool. I think Giddy Park is a unique idea, and everything just looks really good in the new game. Uh, I think that the new levels are pretty cool, and they all kind of feel unique, like Town Hall or the Mount Steep. There's now also an XP system as well as a, a Rewardatron 9000 that gives you rare items and crap. They've added a lot of cool stuff that I really like. There's also a new mode, that being the battle arena. You just play 4v4s with two teams, and I think it's pretty cool. One thing that I love about this game is has to be the art style. They've somehow managed to perfectly mix the cartoony aspects with the 3D sort of semi-realistic textures, and it just looks great. This is what Garden Warfare 1 and 2 should have looked like. Everything just seems so nice and the frame rate and the quality and everything it just makes some of these beautiful vistas that i sometimes just stop to look at they're so detailed and so nice now all the plants actually look normal instead of like horrible freaks from the uncanny zone i think the new characters are really cool snapdragon is a nice new addition as well as the original new acorn i think is really cool i like the new focus on teamwork with characters like the space cadet in the acorn as well as the new wizard zombie and the frequent updates that they're doing the music has to be the lowest thing about me for this game because the music is like 90% reused music and the only original scores just sound like they were ripped straight out of Plants vs Zombies 2 like I mean listen to these tracks Yeah, they sound the exact goddamn same, but still, I feel like everything's just been nailed to a T with this game. I feel like everything is just as it should be. 
I like that there's actually like good bosses in this game instead of just the standard gargantua boss fights that we did in the previous games we actually get full-fledged bosses like the jacko squash or the blight cab or just other crazy bosses that we haven't seen before like I said though, there are a couple of negatives with this game, one of them being the differences between the zombies and the plants quest. Now what I mean by this is that the plants quests are way harder than the zombies quests. The zombies quests are fairly simple, while the plants quests are much more repetitive and much more hard. I don't really understand why this game throws you into these difficult situations, because it just kind of reminds me of the horrors of Plants vs. Zombies 2, where it just kind of threw you into these difficult locations with no training or whatever. I think the biggest problem that people have with this game is the removal of the variants. The variants were one of the best things about Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. They were so darn cool, including the Cheetos one. Like I said, that's my favorite. Please subscribe. But they just got rid of all of them in favor of just costumes. Costumes are cool and all, but it's just kind of lame because they don't change anything about your stats. So you want to know how you change your stats in this game? This is disgusting! Even though that's very disappointing, I think the microtransactions are even worse. Now, in order to basically get anything that isn't just a really common costume, you have to pay, because there's no other way to get the currency in this game besides to pay for it. You know, besides coins and stuff like that. It's really annoying, and I hate when games do that type of thing, where they offer a currency like gems or whatever, but you can't actually get any, or at least you can't get any compared to the amount that you need to buy, like, anything good. It's very frustrating, and it just forces you to buy stuff with actual money. But then again, this is EA that we're talking about, so I don't know why I expected anything. Overall though, I honestly really do like this game. I feel like they made everything at just as it should be for this game. I like the new characters, the new mode, and the overall more focus on solo and multiplayer is really nice. Now I actually really don't have much to say about this game and that's only because it's been soft launch. I actually don't have it in my country yet so technically I can't say anything, but judging off the screenshots and the way the game looks, yeah, I don't think it's going to be very good. I know it's a work in progress, but these graphics, man, they look awful, and I think that the game just looks really boring and really shitty. And yeah, that's basically the Plants vs. Zombies series. It's definitely had its ups and lows, and there have been some real mishaps, okay? We've had some laughs, we had some cries, we've had some divorces, but overall, I feel like the Plants vs. Zombies team is honestly a great example of trying new things, and yeah, you fail a lot a lot big fails one billion dollar fails but you know overall it ended pretty good you know besides plants vs zombies 3 that that game that game can suck my butthole so thanks for watching everybody and remember eat healthy eat brains and subscribe for more fidget spinning epic plant sun power solar panel action And then eat the brains of the one who planted me here. No! I'm just a sunflower, but you need power and entire infantry. You like the taste of brains, we don't like zombies. I used to.